Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devro in Baltimore. On Tuesday, Turkey shot down a Russian jet claiming it violated Turkish airspace despite being issued several warnings. Russia denied that its aircraft entered Turkish airspace, and Russian President Vladimir Putin described the downing of the plane as, quote, a stab in the back committed by accomplices of terrorists. Some strong words about America's ally, Turkey. And at a joint press conference with French President François Hollande, President Obama used the incident to criticize Russia's air campaign in Syria. Let's take a listen. I do think that this points to uh, a ongoing problem with the Russian operations in the sense that they are operating very close to a Turkish border and they are going after uh, moderate opposition that are supported by not only Turkey but a wide range of countries. Going after moderate opposition. Well, our guest today says that's just not true. And now joining us to put this all into context is our guest, Barish Karagak. He's a lecturer in international development studies at Trent University in Ontario. Thank you so much for joining us, Barish. Thanks for having me, Jessica. So, Barish, let's get into the, the intentions behind this incident. Uh, from, from a Turkish perspective, why would Turkey even attack a Russian plane? Well, the immediate uh, reason behind uh, such an act by the Turkish state seems to be uh, related to uh, Turkish concerns about the Turkmen population uh, living in Syria. There have been uh, uh, several announcements by Turkish authorities uh, pointing to the difficult situation the Turkmen have been uh, as a result of uh, particularly Russian uh, strikes uh, recently. Uh, and. Uh, to, again, uh, today, right after the downing of the uh, uh, Russian plane, uh, Ahmet Davutoglu, the Turkish prime minister, uh, had a press conference uh, in which he said Turkey was willing to, first of all, uh, protect its own airspace, but also it would uh, protect, uh, it would do everything uh, to protect the uh, Turkmen, the Turkish brothers living in Syria, in addition to the Arabs of Aleppo. So this might be the reason, but we don't know the uh, exact, the real, the true motivation behind uh, such an act, which has increased the tension between the Turkish state and the Russian state. Right after the uh, downing of the plane, uh, first of all, uh, the Russian uh, foreign minister, Lavrov, uh, uh, canceled his trip uh, that would, to Turkey, which would uh, take place uh, tomorrow. And then Russians... Uh, uh, announced that they were freezing all their military uh, uh, relations with the Turkish state. Uh, th this is significant uh, tension uh, between uh, two countries. And again, uh, this is in a way a little bit uh, unexpected, uh, such a move by the Turkish state, because uh, for, uh, mostly, uh, you know, what, what, what comes to my mind uh, is the trade relations uh, between those two countries. Uh, and Russia is one of the major trade partners of uh, Turkey. Uh, when we look at, for example, the, the oil uh, imports and the natural gas imports by Turkey, Russia is, the, is one of the main suppliers. Actually, Turkey is reliant, is dependent on, uh, to a great extent uh, on Russian natural gas. It's about 60, 65% of the gas consumed in Turkey comes from Russia. Also, in the case of uh, uh, tourism, there, are, there have been uh, a lot of uh, interaction and uh, a very actually close relationship between the two countries uh, in the past years. After German tourists, Russian tourists uh, constitute the second largest national uh, uh, group uh, in terms of the tourists coming to Turkey. About 4.4 million uh, tourists from Russia visited Turkey in the year uh, 2014. Plus, there are so many uh, major uh, uh, Turkish uh, construction companies doing business in Russia. And again, the uh, Russians doing business in Turkey. So this, this is a major, this is a very important uh, cause of tension, which would uh, jeopardize such relations uh, between the two countries in the near future. And it's definitely going to jeopardize what happens in Syria. You know, there are talks 
um, that are going on about a political transition in Syria. So maybe we have to dig a little bit deeper, Barish, and, and talk about the Turkish objectives um, in Syria. What are they hoping to get out of whatever happens in the future um, in Syria? Well, since the beginning of uh, the uh, war in Syria in 2011, Turkey has been very clear. Turkey wanted, has wanted Assad out. But uh, on that point, Turkey has been uh, isolated, particularly in the past couple of years, by the international community. It has been so stubborn on its demand that uh, you know, a future Syria be uh, constructed without Assad. And with the uh, Russian involvement, the picture has completely changed uh, and to a great extent in favor of Assad. So Turkish foreign policy with regard to Syria has been, uh, uh, has been a failure. It will not be an exaggeration to make that uh, argument. And uh, uh, here we, we also I would like to uh, talk about uh, the, you know, I'm deviating from the, the, the question you just posed, but I would like to say a couple of things about the a uh, press conference uh, uh, done by uh, President uh, Obama and pre President uh, Hollande. And in this press conference, uh, uh, Obama said that Syri Russian strikes against the moderate forces were strengthening uh, the Assad regime, and the uh, Russian strikes should be a a targeting ISIS instead of the moderate uh, uh, parts of the Syrian uh, opposition. This, uh, this discourse is quite misleading. Uh, well, if we look at the Free Syrian Army, maybe, yes, it could be considered a moderate uh, opposition force, but it is not the only actor uh, on the ground uh, today in Syria. Another important uh, actor which uh, came into being in 2015 is the uh, army of the so-called Army of uh, Conquest, which is a coalition of a number of uh, Islamist uh, groups uh, in Syria. And they are also quite uh, active uh, around, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Alawite uh, heartland that is controlled by Assad. And uh, this is a this is a, a coalition that has been targeted by uh, uh, Russian uh, strikes. These guys are anything but moderate. The two uh, main components, elements of uh, this uh, uh, coalition are uh, Ahrar al-Sham, an Islamist Salafist uh, group or a coalition again. And the other one is uh, El Nusra Front, which is uh, Syrian Al Qaeda. I cannot understand how these people can refer to such groups and, uh, or actors as moderates. And this is the hypocrisy of the Western powers when it comes to uh, the situation in Syria. All right, Barish, let's pause the conversation there in part two of our discussion. We'll get into more about the West as well as Russia's relationship now that this incident took place. Barish, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.